Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo County Corso. I'm here with the dogs. I think um, our girl Seneca's upstairs, I want to say. Hi right there, just hello, hello. Midnight's over here loving on me. Oh, good lord. Okay, yep, get out of my face. I see you, yes. Hello, preacher. Hello. Yes, I see you. I love you. Oh my god, you guys, seriously? Seriously? Being funny. Yes, I see you, preacher. I love you too. Ooh. Didn't get that on film, but that was Cashmere getting on to midnight for being too excitable. Ow, 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 off my foot. <sighs> Preacher, go lay down. Good boy. Go lay down. So she doesn't like that when they get in their face like that. Ah, Blondie. Come on. So the reason she doesn't like it is because they're acting too much like puppies. It's the same reason that Velocity got in trouble yesterday by Preacher. They're getting too old to be acting like children. Even dogs don't tolerate um, immaturity in dogs that should be acting more mature. So, not so different from us. Come on, you guys. Come on here. So, I wanted to touch base on Cashmere. Come on. Come, come, come. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Yes. I wanted to touch base on, you know, follow-up of my series of what to expect um, when your dog is pregnant. Um, we are at the last... Cashmere! Shh. She thinks there's food in there. We've already fed her a ton. Get in here and lay down right now. You're not going to do that. She's cleaning the kitchen. You need to leave her be. Stay. You stay. I said stay. <clears throat> so... So anyway, so um, she's just eating a lot right now. That's a big thing. Food has gone up a lot. We really don't want her going upstairs and stuff because there's just so much weight on her right now that it's not good for her joints. So, you know, we try to monitor her stair use. We have a gate up to prevent her from going up there. Um, so that's, you know, that's gone a long way. We don't let her jump up on top of the bed. It's just irresponsible. It's no really no different than if you had a super obese dog. You know, she's just way obese right now. Not not obese, but she's in the, if she was to be fat, then she would be. Right now she's just pregnant, but the weight is still the same. So we really want to, you know, limit her activity and make sure that, you know, she doesn't overload herself at all. As we get closer to her due date, her due date is the 19th, I believe that's next Friday. As we get closer to that date, we will begin to start taking her temperature. When you notice that the temperature goes um, around, I would say anything like 98.6 and below is something to probably pay attention to. In my experience, they'll hit really low like 98 or 98.3. Um, you know, stuff like that, that's a indicator that labor is going to be on pretty soon, pretty soon. Another thing that you look for is kind of some nervous panting, and you'll also notice that their pupils, ah, stay, you'll also notice that their pupils will dilate. And so those are all indications that labor is going to be coming very soon. When, um... I'm going to have to build the uh, kennel box, so I'm a little intimidated by that, I'm not going to lie, but I'm going to do it before I hadn't done it. Um, so I'm going to do it. It's probably just going to be me, but um, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll try to enlist the help of Savannah. I'm sure she doesn't want to help me, but unfortunately I need her help. So hopefully she won't give me too much fuss. Seeing as how she's 13 and she's not too keen on helping, but we'll see what I can get her to do. So I would like to be able to have a nice, uh, a nice whelping box like what Samantha and Josh have over there and at a uh, Hawk Ridge County Corso. So you know, if not, I may still do what I did before. It works. It's just that I like the prettiness of the, of the. The kennel box and I like how, or the whelping box and I like how it has the <clears throat> the bar to prevent them from laying on them and because I just pretty much camp out there for like the first couple weeks, you know, I literally just, I barely sleep and anytime I hear a sound I run in and I mean, I have to 
you know, there's been a couple times where I've had to run in and scoop a baby up from underneath her. So, you know, it's just hard for her when she's got so many puppies. But hopefully maybe she'll be better this time. She um, it was her first time before, so maybe it'll be different this time, hopefully. We'll see. But, you know, I'm not not thinking that there will be any trouble, but one of the things that I do like to have, I like to have lots of um, fresh rags, and you need to, like, go buy some that you don't care about throwing away because, honestly, you're not going to want to put those <laughs> in your washer. So, uh, you know, you can go to Walmart and get yourself some of those, like, auto rag towels, you know, those black or blue towels and... Just, you know, I just use them to clean the puppies off as they come out and kind of rub them and warm them up a little bit, get their get their body moving a bit, and I try to dry them off as much as possible. Um, another thing that I like to do when she is in labor is I like to give her vanilla ice cream. I make sure to buy the, you know, very low ingredients, nothing special, but I like for her to have the calcium. I like for her to have the you know, the sugar, the energy from the sugar. And so I just, I just find it to, to really help. And, um, I also like to have bottles on hand. One of the things that you want to make sure of is that you don't use puppy bottles. You want to go to the store and get yourself some newborn bottles. I believe the ones we, we have are like tippy, Tommy, tippy, something like that. Timmy, Tommy, I don't know, something Somebody will know. I'm sure they'll they'll put it in the comment section. But if you get the newborn nipple for that bottle, it may seem like there's nothing coming out, but that's the way it's supposed to be because you don't want for them to choke on it. So it's always important to have that on hand just in case. And um, I'm trying to think of you know anything else I like to do. Uh, This is a bit dirty. This is actually from last time. So you'll see these little bits of, um, this is like pine shavings that is stuck to it. And so that's because we had um, some pine shavings. And you want to be real careful about that. Something else I should talk about. We used <clears throat> really fine pine shavings last time, and that was a mistake. They can, the, the really fine particles can agitate their eyes and uh, nasal patches and stuff like that. So I don't advise doing that. Um, what we ended up doing is going and getting hay. And we had the pups that were on hay. Um, you can also just put a blanket over it in the meantime. But, you know, you have to be real careful because there's puppies are, you know, very fragile when they're young. And they oftentimes get themselves into trouble. So if you have blankets in there, they often will get underneath all the blankets and they can either suffocate or get laid on. If you have hay, they also will burrow down into the hay. I, I prefer the hay because, to be honest with you, even if she lays on them, there's usually like enough of a buffer that you can actually like get them out from underneath it. It's not as bad as if it was a firm surface where the puppy just gets squished. So I really, yeah, yeah, there we go. We, we've got some hay here left over. So this is the hay that we're using. I think it's coastal hay. I'm not quite sure. Um, but like four bays of that. Yeah, it works really well. I, I like underneath it, I like to put the shavings, uh, the, fine, the, the um, pine or whatever, cedar shavings or whatever. I like to put that underneath it, but not where they can get to it. I just do the hay on top. And... <clears throat> so, uh, if you don't have the rails of a whelping box, you really do need to be in there all the time monitoring, making sure that nobody's getting laid on because it only takes, you know, honestly a couple seconds to lose a puppy. So, and you really don't want to have to go through that. It's quite tragic when you do. Um, so anyway, uh, those are, um, some of the tips that I have as far as whelping, I just, you know, you always want to let your vet know as well. Make sure that they're on call, that they know what's going on. It's a good idea to do like what we did where you get an x-ray so that you have an idea of how many puppies are in there. That way you know whether or not you're going to need to rush to the vet if you've got one left in there or not. And uh, lots of water for your mama dog. Lots of, you know, love and care. And then you also want to have a nice, I used a... 
a chicken heating lamp. It's a red lamp. Uh, it was like $10 at Tractor Supply. <laughs> but you want to make sure that the puppies stay warm. They cannot regulate their own temperature. So you're going to want to make sure that you are uh, taking, you want to have a thermostat in there so it doesn't get too hot. But you do want to make sure that they stay, you know, pretty, pretty warm. So that's something that we monitor. I always, you know, I, I just, you know, I completely OCD out on my puppies. <laughs> I mean, I'm always in there with them. And I just love them. I like to just, you know, spend time with them. Uh, another good thing is, or important thing is that you want to make sure that, that you um, take weights of the puppies. The only way you'll know at a, at when they're this small whether or not they're gaining weight or not is if you do regular weights. And when you have as many puppies as Cashmere's fixing to have, that becomes really important. So, you know, keep that in mind. Go ahead and get yourself a little scale, and that will go a long way. So, I'm trying to think. If you do have a puppy that has a hard time, um, maybe it didn't come out breathing, you can give them a good rub, and you can even do, there's a, um, a supplement, I can't remember the name of it, it's something Dine, um, but it is, you can get it at your Callahan's Tractor Supply, any kind of feed store, and it is a, I think it's Nutridyne, um, it is a, um, just a energy supplement, so it can kind of give them a kick, just to kind of help them if they, maybe if they got, took a long while getting out of the birth canal, whatever it is, it can kind of help them to um, get their metabolism up to where they can get to eating and catch up with the rest of the gang. Did you talk about what kind of uh, formula Yeah, the formula I used was Similac, I believe, a Similac. And um, it worked really well. I had great results with it. Sometimes it can be hard to get the puppies to eat, to take the bottle. But if you're persistent and you keep trying, it will work. One of the things that I really suggest is to kind of wait till they're asleep a bit. Like, don't fight them too much. Wait till they're asleep a bit. Put the a bottle in their mouth and then kind of give them a bit of a rub. Wake them up a little bit. And as they wake up and they realize that something's in their mouth, that automatic suction, uh, that automatic feeding behavior will begin. And then what you want to do is what I do is I take both of my fingers here, this finger and this finger here, and I put it on both sides of their mouth, on the corners of their mouth to help them get suction. So, uh, you know, that'll help a lot. So every puppy's different. Sometimes you, you have to try different handling methods, just like if you're breastfeeding kids. So, you know, you just got to keep at it. Don't give up. There are other methods, but that's what's worked for me. If you have a litter of puppies and you're having a hard time feeding them, um, you know, feel free to contact me and, and I can try to help you out and put you in the right direction as far as making sure that um, you can get them fed. So, because there are more extreme measures like what are called, um, what do they call it, syringe feeding, things like that. So, this is the food that we feed. It's, you know, just, or it's Petlac, sorry, not Similac. Um... So anyway, so this is what we give them. It works really well. You know, it's, you don't have to give it all the time, but you do want to make sure when you have a really big litter like this that you are um, supplementing any of the puppies that are not getting enough food. And that's the way you know that is by, you know, taking, uh, taking their weights. So that's how we kind of keep an eye on everybody and make sure that they're all getting what they need. Last time Cashmere went into labor, I want to say a day or two before she was due. So there's the chance that she could go into labor on Wednesday. I mean, judging by how she looks right now, especially her, her back end here, um, I'm going to say that it's probably going to be sooner than later because it's it looks a little red to me and usually that will grow in size before they actually have the puppies to make room for them. So, you know, pay attention to your female, um, you know, you know, read her body, never leave them alone when they're like this, not ever. You really want to be on point, keeping an eye, monitoring, because if there's a problem, it is essential that you get them to the vet immediately. And if you think you've got a problem, please contact me, let me know. There's a lot of people that would give you bad advice, and the truth is, if your dog has already had contractions, and they're pushing and nothing's coming out, there's, you know, I would say... 
if they're straining and nothing's coming out, I would give them at the very most a couple hours and then I would take them to the vet because sometimes it can take a little bit to get that first puppy out. If you've got one puppy out and you go longer than an hour, take them to the vet. Okay. If you have a uh, labor and you're starting to get a lot of black smelly liquid, take them to the vet immediately. Those are all bad signs. Um, you, the, the sooner you get your dog to the vet, the more likely you will be able to save your puppies and save your mother's life. Because the longer you wait, the more likely the puppy is to sour in the uterus, which can um, cause a toxic environment for any of the other puppies and for the mother. And it can even create a really horrible thing where the puppies can't nurse off the mom because the milk actually becomes toxic to them. So, you know, time is of the essence. Do not take chances with your dog. Don't just let nature take its course. You take her butt in there and you get her checked up. If you can't afford a vet visit, uh, you shouldn't be breeding dogs, period, end of story. You should have enough money saved up to do a cesarean, which, at the you know, we're looking at at least $1,000. You should have that saved up before you even consider breeding your female. If you don't have that saved up or you can't save it up, do not breed dogs. You're only taking massive risks with your dog and that's not fair. So like I said, we're at the, we're, we're counting it down. Uh, if I think of anything else, I'll definitely let you know. But as far as we're looking at, she's just <clears throat> eating and eating and getting, you know, bigger and bigger. We, we can see her milk starting to come in some. So <laughs> yeah, she's unbelievably she uncomfortable right now <laughs> so um but yeah she's getting close man she's getting real close so <laughs> yeah. but you can see how that's big back there i'm thinking sooner than later man i'm thinking she it's probably yeah but i'm thinking it's probably going to be sooner so she's well in i mean she's good like she's not um either way it's less than a week. I've heard of puppies being born a week early and they were fine. So either way, we we should be good. But but I'm judging by her signs, by her body, I'm going to say it's not much longer. She's panting a lot and all that. And I saw today when she was eating, her eyes were like, I don't know what. Like, no, no, she's not, she's not in labor. So anyway, I guess that's it for us today. Um, sorry, nothing really eventful. It's been really crazy. I've had a lot of personal stuff going on. Um... Life has just not been easy <laughs> for me lately. So I'm trying to hang in there. I'm trying to keep um, doing this and putting out good content for you guys and staying on top of things and just keeping my head down and keep trudging along. So bear with me. And as time goes by, we'll have more upbeat and better videos. And as we you know, move into this new house, Savannah and I, it'll definitely be... Um, an opportunity for us to really grow and, and develop some, you know, much better content as far as having the property to do stuff and training. And, you know, I'd like to put up a little obedience course on the property. I'd like to do a lot. So we'll be growing, but it's going to take work. <laughs> then I'm going to be tired, but we're going to get it done. So y'all have a good night. Enjoy your weekend and we'll talk at you later. All right. Bye. Yep. Let's see if she'll wake up. Bye. She almost did. <laughs> Hello. Almost. Anyway. Okay. Bye, y'all.